DVD preview. 1. A. Work in pairs. Look at the page and answer the questions. 1. Which of the things in the box can you see on the page? A skyscraper. Karaoke. A tram. A shopping center. A bamboo steamer. 2. What can you see, do in Hong Kong? 3. Which activities are popular in Hong Kong? A. For tourists. B. For locals. C. For both. B. Read the text and underline the correct alternative. 1. Carmen is travel journalist. 2. She has three questions. 3. She gets information from local people and tourists. It's a city of 7 million people in just over 1100 square kilometers. This is one of the most densely populated areas in the entire world. We're in Hong Kong. I'm Carmen Roberts and my job as a travel journalist is to ditch the skyscrapers and the shopping centres and get to the heart of Hong Kong and find out what makes this city tick. So my editor will text me a series of challenges. The only rules, no tourists and no guidebooks. We are going local. First challenge, where to find the best milk tea in Hong Kong. Gong Yin Man. Gong Yin Man. Do you speak English? A little bit. I'm looking for the best milk tea place in Hong Kong. What? Do you know the name Fong Yun? In Gekka Street, the milk flavor is so elegant and then so smooth. It's a milk tea, the best. Okay. Milk tea. Ah, Nan Fong Yun. Gong Lai Cha. The tea is really, really strong, but it's also very sweet. It's quite refreshing, actually, when it's a hot day here in Hong Kong. Mmm. Okay, next challenge. Find a shop where I can buy locally made goods. Hello, hello. Hi there. Come on, come on. Look. I need some help. Just really quickly, really quickly. Surely this girl's local. Where can I find a shop that sells locally made goods made in Hong Kong? The steaming dim sum. The, the steamer. You can buy it in Sai Ying Kun area. You can take the tram. Thank you. This is a bit harder than I thought it would be. I found a place to go, but how do I get there? There's some minibuses, minibuses, taxis. You go, where's the tram? <laughs> Oh. Jackpot, yes. Hello, looks quite authentic. There's a man making bamboo baskets. It's amazing. Look at the rows and rows and rows of bamboo baskets as far as the eye can see. How long does it take you to make one? <laughs> Half hour, that's all. Wow, you're fast. I've always wanted a bamboo steamer. Might make a good present for my mum. Final challenge. Where do locals go to have fun? What do you do for fun? I break break loud. I I I go to um lunch. Yes. I like dancing. 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 Hip 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 hop. Yes. Oh. Hi there. Hi. What do local people around here do for fun? Oh, I think um karaoke is a good fun here. Karaoke. There's a place like right next door actually called um is it Red Red Mister or something? It's good to make fun of yourself once in a while, right? <laughs> Yeah, easy for you to see. Oh, look, I see a sign. Red Mister. Oh, check it out. It's like a disco. There's these two people cashing in here. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Hi, can I join you? We'll pick a song that you can definitely sing a classic. Something easy. <laughs> DVD view. 2. A. Work in pairs and read Carmen's three challenges. Which do you think is the easiest thing to find in Hong Kong? 1. Find the best milk tea in Hong Kong. 2. Find a shop where you can buy locally made goods. 3. Where do locals go to have fun? B. Watch the DVD. Which was the easiest thing to find? What problems did Carmen have with the challenges? Easiest thing to find? The karaoke bar, it's next door. Problems, 
A couple of people don't understand what she asks about the milk tea. She finds it difficult to find the location of the dim sum steamer and the best way to get there. C. Look at the program extracts below. Watch the DVD again and correct the mistakes. 1. The tea is really, really strong but it's also very het. Correct the mistakes. The tea is really, really strong but it's also very sweet. 2. It's quite refreshing actually when it's a warm day here in Hong Kong. Correct the mistakes. It's quite refreshing actually when it's a hot day here in Hong Kong. 3. I found a place to go but when do I get there? Correct the mistakes. I found a place to go but how do? Get there. 4. Look at the rows and rows and rows of bamboo baskets, as far as the eye can look. Correct the mistakes. Look at the rows and rows and rows of bamboo baskets, as far as the eye can see. 5. How long does it take you to finish one? Correct the mistakes. How long does it take you to make one? 6. What do you do for friends? Correct the mistakes. What do you do for fun? 7. There's a place like right next door actually called Blue Mister or something. Correct the mistakes. There's a place like right next door actually called Red Mister or something. 8. Pick a song that you can definitely hear, a classic. Correct the mistakes. Pick a song that you can definitely sing, a classic. 3. Work in pairs and answer the questions. 1. For you, what is the most interesting thing to do or to see in Hong Kong? 2. Can you think of two other challenges to give Carmen? 3. Do you think Hong Kong is a good place to visit? Why, why not? Speak out a city challenge. 4. A. Work in pairs and read the questions. Tick one question you would like to answer for a town, city you know. 1. Where do locals go to have fun? 2. Where is there a walk that tourists don't know about? 3. Where can you find great street food? 4. Where can you see something tourists never see? 5. Where can you take the best photo in the town, city? B. Answer the questions below about your challenge. Write notes not full sentences. Where is it? What can you find or see there? When is the best time to go there? Why do you like it? C. Listen to a man talk about a place in his city. Which challenge in exercise 4A does he speak about? Okay, so this place is in London. It's in the north of London, and most tourists don't know about it. It's called Little Venice. Little Venice because it's next to the water. There's water everywhere. There are lots of boats, houseboats, People live in them. There are lots of good restaurants and cafes next to the water. I like it because I can sit there, have a coffee, and watch people on the boats or by the water. Little Venice is a lovely place in the daytime, or at night. And it's one of the best places to take photos. You can take a photo of the houseboats, or the water, or the people. Some of the people are very interesting. I think the best time to take a photo is in the early morning or in the early evening because it's really quiet and the light is beautiful. D. Listen again. Which questions in exercise 4B does he answer? Where is it? North London. What can you find or see there? Water, boats, houseboats, people. Why do you like it? I can sit there, 
have a coffee and watch people on the boats or by the water. Okay, so this place is in London. It's in the north of London, and most tourists don't know about it. It's called Little Venice. Little Venice because it's next to the water. There's water everywhere. There are lots of boats, houseboats. People live in them. There are lots of good restaurants and cafes next to the water. I like it because I can sit there, have a coffee, and watch people on the boats or by the water. Little Venice is a lovely place in the daytime or at night, and it's one of the best places to take photos. You can take a photo of the houseboats or the water or the people. Some of the people are very interesting. I think the best time to take a photo is in the early morning or in the early evening, because it's really quiet and the light is beautiful. Five, A, work in groups. Student A, answer the question you chose in exercise. Four A, use the key phrases to help other students. Ask some questions about the place. B. Which place or experience was the most interesting for you? Six. A. Work pairs and read the article. Which question in exercise 4A does it answer? Which of the three places would you most like to visit? My London. London is the capital of the UK. It's in the southeast of England on the River Thames. Tourists love its famous sites: Buckingham Palace, Big Ben, the wonderful art galleries and museums. But where do you go to escape the tourists? Here are three ideas. One, Little Venice. This is a beautiful area in the north of London with water all around. It's a good place to sit. Have a coffee and watch people on their houseboats. Two, John Soane's museum. John Soane was an architect and an art collector, and in his house, the museum, there are many strange and amazing objects. Morning is the best time to go there. It's nice and quiet then. Three, Temple Gardens. These are some of my favorite gardens in London. They're in the centre of London, near the River Thames, in an area for lawyers and law companies. They're perfect for a walk or a picnic lunch, especially in summer. Which of the three places would you most like to visit? Two. B. Read the article again. For each place, which questions does the writer answer? Where is it? One. Three. What can you see or do there? One, two, three. When is a good time to visit? Two, three. C. Write a website article about two or three places in your town, city, which are away from the tourist centers. Use the ideas and phrases from exercise four and the article above to help. Write 100 to 150 words. Contribution from a student from Palestine. One, Abraham Mosque. One of the oldest holy sites in the world, the Abraham Mosque or the Ibrahimi Mosque, is one of the most influential holy sites in the world. It is believed to be the burial site of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob. Rebecca and Leah. As such, its influence reaches all three of the major religions, being sacred to Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. However, its religious influence isn't its only asset. The intimidatingly large mosque has an overwhelming intensity that is truly unforgettable. The interior is grand, ornate, and an impressive sight to say the least. Two, Herodian, burial site of Herod the Great. Atop a truncated, cone-shaped hill, Herod the Great left his mark. In the Judean desert, a palace, fortress, and small town can be found, 
built between 15 and 23 AD. Excavations of the artificial hill, which is the peak of the Judean desert, revealed some remarkable discoveries. The ruins of Herodian still remain and, like the fictitious city of Atlantis, have an unearthly quality to them. Imagining the construction of this incredible site is amazing enough, but witnessing it is almost overwhelming. Visitors will surely find themselves aghast at the fascinating ruins of this unique fortress. 3. Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Site of the Crucifixion. The site of the Crucifixion, and the burial site of Jesus of Nazareth, this is one of the holiest sites in the world for Christianity. Despite its religious significance, the beauty of this church surpasses all else, including its history. The interior is colorful, ornate, and compelling. The atmosphere of the church alone is well worth experiencing. Many people come to the church to weep and to caress the stone of Golgotha, where the cross is believed to have been placed. With high domed ceilings and an ancient structure, the building is a site that shouldn't be missed by anyone with a keen eye for architecture.